everyone and welcome to the very first episode of the Woven Almanac podcast. My name is Dawn, I'm originally from the UK and now I live in the Netherlands just outside of Amsterdam, uh, not very far from the um, flight path of Schiphol Airport so occasionally you might hear a plane going over. I've lived here for about 20 years now with my South African partner Lawrence and our two teenage boys Josh and William and my fur babies, uh, Jack, who's our Parsons Terrier, and Daxter, who's my very fluffy ginger cat. Um, I will leave links um, in the description box below, and if I can't find a link, I will at least put uh, some textual context so you can see um, or refer back to what I was talking about. Um, so just to explain a little bit about the channel. So I have been on YouTube for about, I think, three years now, three or four years. And originally, because we live overseas, I started a vlog channel so all our friends and family could um, keep track of what we were up to and how the boys were growing. And because I'm, uh, I am an avid crafter um, and the crafting was creeping more and more into the vlog, I then decided to um, start a craft podcast, I think about a year ago now. And it's very confusing for people when they first join the channel. They don't know, is it a vlog? Is it a podcast? And the content, you know, can change at any given moment. So I thought, well, okay, it's coming up for the new year. Let's start afresh. So that vlog channel, if you're interested in, you know, listening to my daily waffles and traveling in and in around uh, the Netherlands, uh, that link will be below Dawn's days. Um, there is always a smattering of crafting going on because, yeah, as I said, I am an avid crafter. And um, if you want to contact me um, directly, I do have an Instagram account for the Woven Almanac, but it's better to use the um, Dawn's Days um, email address and also the DM on the Instagram of Dawn's Days. I'm more active with that. Um, so, yeah, in the episode today, I will be doing a little bit of recapping of um, the very last episode of the craft workshop podcast sorry this is confusing um and also i'll talk about some of the things i opened in my advent um calendars this year and some future plans um i have got a very plain boring glass of water so um i hope you've got something nice to drink and um a project to work on um, I'm very interactive um, in the comments on my other channel so if you want to drop you know hello and let me know what you've been working on and just anything really I read every single comment and um, I would love to hear from you and also let me know are you here from Dawn's Days or did you find uh, the channel from new and if you don't want to comment that's perfectly fine with me it's just nice to know that I'm not sat here talking to myself <laughs> so um, in today's episode I've made a few notes uh, I'm going to share some knitting with you, uh, a little bit of crochet, uh, as I said, the advents, uh, some of what I received in the advents, uh, a little bit of it incoming and um, yeah, just some future plans for 2022. Um, and I have got my trusty reading glasses because yes, I do need them. Um, so one of the um, one of the things that I worked on um, throughout the year, and um, I'm really excited because I know there's going to be another um, knit along or a cow, um, is the year of dishcloth that was by the kitchen sink knitter. Is it the kitchen sink shop? Sorry, Garlane, and. Um, uh, I, I was I saw that on Instagram and um, I thought oh well, I fancy having a go at that and it was really nice each month you received a free pattern for a, a very small dishcloth uh, free and um, I learned a lot of new techniques and um, yeah playing around with patterns I so I've done 10 of them uh, but I can't find them all <laughs> and I don't know what order they are in but I thought well I can quickly show you some of them that I did because if you're not really, if you're new to knitting or you're not a confident knitter or you just like to work on small projects, these dishcloths are great. And as I said, they are free. Uh, Garlane is actually doing um, the year of dishcloths again uh, for 2022. So if you're interested, go and sign up to her newsletter and um, yeah, come January, you'll get the, uh, the patterns. Um, so I don't remember what the names of them were, but I'll just show you. So as I said, they're all in cotton. Uh, this is a little bit like a, I don't know like a basket weave is it this might have been the log cabin pattern memory serves me rightly and um the nice thing about the dishcloth is you can do everything from scrap because i think they take like 20 grams in a weight of cotton 
sorry that's somebody at my door <laughs> um i don't remember what this pattern was this is also uh in i think it's in the same color it is this would be escapius katona that i knitted it in uh so they're very very simple but effective i like the texture in them uh again Oh, I don't remember what that one was called either. I don't remember what any of them were called. Isn't that terrible? I should have made a note, really. But if you want to go and sign up to Garlane's um, blog, they're all listed on there. I love that one. That was such a nice one to make. And they, they work up so quickly. Uh, we had a bit of colour work. Uh, this was really interesting. It's a bit curly. Uh, I'll move so you can see. This was really interesting. Some people decided to do this. I saw on Instagram in um, Christmas colours which was really nice. This was, uh, it's upside down. This was um, called Bloomin. Uh, sorry, I'm covering my face, Bloomin. Which is basically Dutch for flowers, uh, which got me thinking, I wonder if Garlaine is Dutch. And um, yeah, I have had a few chit chats with her on uh, Instagram. And yes, indeed, she has Dutch heritage. <laughs> She's actually really nice. She's in Canada, but um, I think, her mother, mate, possibly her dad is uh, Dutch. Uh, I think this one was called Harvest. I really, really like this pattern. When you're knitting in cotton, you know, it can be a bit loose. So the tension's not great, but it this feels lovely. It's really, you know, all the little bumps, the ridges on it. Um, I have got, I have started it and didn't finish it. The, uh, the last one of the year, uh, the December one, this is in a Crafty Clegg's um, gift bag. That was gifted to me, drawstring. So cute. Um, so I do have the pattern. And that this one's called Jingle All The Way Dishcloth. Um, and I decided to do mine in two colours. Uh, so, sorry, I've not really got very far on it, but I do... I do know it was, um, it's a little bit like a bauble shape. And again, this is all in um, Scapia's Katona. So I still have to finish that. And then I think it was either the March or May one that I still have to go back. So yeah, if you're interested, um, go ahead and sign up. And um, yeah, it's a really, really fun uh, knit along. And also, as I said, you know, you get to learn some new techniques and... Uh, and if you follow the hashtag on Instagram, it's really nice to see what other people's takes are, you know, what colours they use and so forth. Um, so the other thing uh, that it was, it was a work in progress and now I've finished it. It's This is the uh, Cat's Paw Cow by Cheryl, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, Thice, these Thice, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and... Um, yeah, you can see, good, which way around, I think that's how they go. These are the little cat's paws, the lace work. Uh, this is in like a gingerbread colour. This is actually my own hand dyed yarn. Uh, this is some, um, I would say this is uh, an Aran weight that I bought in uh, one, from one of the Dutch islands in um, uh, called Tessel uh, earlier in this, this year and um it's actually it was it's hand spun so it's very rustic very toothy and um it's like a tonal that i did and um the pattern gives you two well you can do it as wide as you like or as long as you like but the pattern gave you two options for a cast on and i chose the biggest which i think was 105 so it is a little bit loose i'll attempt to put it on yeah so that's the cowl the finished object i'm going to take it off because i'll get super super hot um yeah i think i'll make another one of these but i might do them on the smaller cast on just to see what i like but yeah it's, it's a lovely pattern very very simple repeat as well uh okay what else have we got um Oh, I had a bit of a disaster. I'm working on my close to usual. Hold on, I've left it in the other room. Again, another Crafty Claire Creations bag. <laughs> See a theme here. Um, because I knew I had some Minnie's um, um, advent um, calendars to open, 
um, I wanted to use up some uh, minis that I already had in my stash. So I decided to knit the close to you short. Now, uh, I've been having a great old time. I memorized the pattern. It's very, very simple repeat. And I don't know how I've managed to do it, but I, I've kept increasing where I should not have been increasing. This is a one skein um, shawl and it's by uh, Justina Lorkowska. Again, it's a free um, pattern on Ravelry. Um, and it was only, uh, I started paying attention on Instagram and I was thinking, mine doesn't look like that. <laughs> so i'm calling it a design feature happy accident um the minis are from all over the place some are from um craft house magic ellie uh an advent from hers from last year some are from my friend helen uh she did a giveaway and i won it oh i'm all tangled sorry no oh, let's see i'm trying to untangle this i've got loads of ends to weave in as well but, um, well, you'll see what I mean. I'm frantically trying to decrease it now because it, it has sort of, it's monstered a little bit. I'm really happy with the um, fade that I've done though. Uh, okay, I'm trying to, it's getting quite big now, so I don't want it to. So this is the, this is the um, edge of the shawl. Let's see. So this is what, uh, this is what go this is what goes around the neck like so and then you see these eyelets so these are all supposed to be the same size and as you can see with mine they just got they just grew they grew and they grew and they grew <laughs> so at this point i'm really trying to decrease them i think i've got another four or five mini skeins so another skein to put in i already knew i didn't want a one skein shawl i wanted it to be quite big i don't mind actually i quite like the effect on it i quite like this sort of frill and i think you know when it's, it'll be quite drapey on so yeah i'm quite happy with the happy accident uh next i'm going to be moving on to some um grays i think are the next uh, sort of colors and you can see better here yeah uh i'm going to be moving on to some greys and then they'll end up with um blues so that's the that's the fade you can see so yeah i don't know how on earth i managed to do that i just yeah that just goes to show you when you get a little bit overconfident <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I know this pattern. I don't need to look at the instructions anymore. Clearly, I did. Uh, but it's fine. Um, I'll show that to you when I finished it because um, I'm really, really enjoying um, working on it. Um, oh, the other thing, I managed to <laughs> finish some Christmas socks. Uh, so this is just a basic vanilla pattern. They're a bit baggy because, yes, I have worn them. Um, this is a, a Christmas yarn by hobby and i hope you can see yeah it's got stellina in it uh just a really simple um sock uh vanilla sock recipe my own that i like to make um what i did was i, th I shared this in i did vlogmas on my other channel i shared this in vlogmas uh i tried to get a really close pattern match and i super super happy with how how well they match really really happy with that i love the little toes um if you're interested i've got um quite chubby ankles <laughs> so i've um i cast on 64 i did it magic loop method on um chai Gu red lace uh 2.5 um and i think this is um like a 15 16 uh, row repeat two by two rib um and then these i usually do between 40 and 50 rows on the um on the ankle and then it's a heel flap and gusset uh and then this is it's not the wedge toe it's the umbrella toe or round toe so yeah just just a recipe that you know i've found after making a few pairs of socks now that i quite like um i have cast on some new socks uh this was a pattern gifted to me by my friend sue 
um i don't know if any of the you know the the regulars from dawn today are watching this channel i don't know how many people are even going to subscribe so it feels very strange to me but um yeah this is in housed in another crafty clay creations bag this is in uh, an advent that i got from jeanette uh, so this pattern is really really nice this is um this is a k jones pattern uh from the bakery bears uh, it's a paid pattern and it's the lattice topped socks um so i print my patterns because i like to scribble on them and make notes i'm knitting this in a combination of I'm sorry, I've lost the ball band because this is um, the second pair of socks I'm knitting these into now. This is Lammy's, Lammy's Running, and it's this beautiful, like a candy floss pink. And I'm knitting it with my own hand dyed. This is 75% um, merino, 25% um, polymede. And I thought they was quite a nice match. So this is how far I've got. You can get a little idea. These again, these are on the chai goo. Oops. Oh, let me try and get these ends out of the way. Thank you. So you can get an idea that of the lattice. And I love the striping. I think with the tonal colours of my hand dyed, it goes perfectly. So I'm really um I'm really really enjoying that. So there's that's the first repeat of the lattice and i think i've got another two or three to go and then um yeah i'll keep you updated on that um i did have to pull it back because i wasn't concentrating so this is definitely not a sort of mindless sofa knit but um yeah i think i will cast on another pair of vanilla just because if i'm on a long drive and i'm not driving i like to have something to work on um i think that's uh oh no i've got one more thing to share with you so if you are from dawn's days uh you'll know that earlier this year i bought the felix pullover which is by um amy uh christophers and i was so i've never really knitted myself a garment a garment uh, i've knitted shawls and um you know blankets and socks as you can see in dishcloths but i've never actually knitted um, a full-on garment for myself and i just wanted a really plain vanilla um sweater so um i bought the felix um pullover and um i think for a beginner there just wasn't enough information in it for me so um i put it to one side in the naughty corner as they say and um I've just sort of left it for now. Oh, I'm in a tangle. Hold on. Um, however, I've decided, well, you know, New Year's approaching. Let's pick it up. Let's have another go. So I've just cast on the neck. Uh, this is, it's an Aran uh, sweater. This is catchier, but I don't have the ball band of this one. I have got a stack of them in my craft room upstairs. So I will um, put um, the name of the yarn that I'm using. It's like, it's really nice like a dark forest green and some of the pet's hairs on it as well there I think <laughs> of course um one of the so a little tip if you're a beginner or you know you want to have a go at a basic pullover so as I say I've only started the rib um I did uh when I pulled it back last time I got as I got a sort of this is not a hand knitted garment by the way even though it looks it uh, I got as far as sort of here you know the the yoke and um it's got like little eyelets running down uh front and back and they were all zigzag they were yeah they, that's as far as i got they were a mess so what i did um on the the ribbon of the neck so without giving too much away because it's paid for the ribbon of the neck uh, i already worked out where the stitch markers were going to go and i put them on right at the beginning um so if you want to have a go, I really recommend do this method and then it's out of the way, it's done. So it's you cast on 84 stitches and then it's a, a knit one, purl one, a repeat rib. And what I did, I placed a stitch marker after the seventh stitch, um, the 42nd stitch, the 49th stitch, and then the beginning of the round. And if you do that, 
then your eyelets should technically be in straight lines so yeah that's what I mean it wasn't so you know I'm not I'm not a really a beginner you know I think I'm an intermediate um intermediate um knitter uh and I've knitted um, like toy sweaters and stuff. So I know the construction of um, a sweater. I, I have actually, I'm halfway through um, uh, the J sweater as well, which is a colour work sweater, which I need to finish. Um, but yeah, it was just, it sort of, it, it was, it told you to play stitch markers after the fact. And I found it very confusing. So that's my tip for you. If you want to have a go at that, um, place the markers already at the beginning and then hopefully you should have nice straight eyelets. We'll see. I'll share the progress with you as we go. Um, okay, so I've got a little bit of crochet to share with you. Uh, one of the things um, I started, well, as soon as it launched, I like everybody else, I rushed out and I bought myself um, all the yarn to make the Yule Tide pattern. This is the Attic 24 one, Lucy. Um, obviously, I've not finished it because um, I'm showing you it's a whip. I have to be careful. Oh, I'm not attached. So I'll show you the progress of how far I've got. I have to stand up for this. So I think this is probably uh, halfway through the repeat. It's a three row repeat. Yes, it is three three row repeat. And it's a free one. If you go onto the uh, Attic24 website, you can get hold of a copy there. The colours are beautiful. But yeah, as it's growing, it's, you know, one round is taking quite a while. I'm not in any rush. Even though it's the Yuletide blanket, uh, I love the jewel colours. I'll keep this up um, out all year, you know, as a sofa blanket. So I think it'll be a nice, decent size. So, um, yeah, really enjoying working on that. Um, it's a pleasure. And as I said, uh, because it's a three-row uh, pattern repeat, it's um, it's all worked in, um, I crochet in, in US terms, um, double crochet. So, um, yeah, it is, you know, it works up quite quickly. I'll show you. So you've got uh, like a treble, I think in the U in the UK, so it's a, a row of doubles, uh, then a spike, which is still double US double crochet, but you go down, you go up and down the previous row, and then you do these like V stitches, and that's it. And then there is a special edging at the um, at the very end, but I've looked ahead and it looks really really simple. So if you're if you're new to crochet, I think you can do this. You just have to ma master the US double uh, crochet or the UK tri uh, triple crochet uh, stitch and you'll be off. It's in, this is um, the kit. I didn't buy the kit. I bought the equivalent because I couldn't get the kit in the Netherlands. But all the colours of the kit were listed. This is um, Stylecraft Special DK. You can also make your own um, colours up if you wanted to. I think I made a little... This is in my, I keep them all in this basket. I did make a little, yeah, here it is, little swatch uh, just for myself of all the colours. This is how many colours there are. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 12. There's 12 colours in all. So, and then I also... Uh, while they're still, I mean, this is getting quite loose now. I keep the ball bands on, and I've also um, the ball bands have got the the names written on them. So, yeah, um, this is it. I'm not. There's no rush on this. It's just you know, as and when I feel like doing a bit of crochet, you know, pick it up. Uh, the other thing I started working on. This was just something for fun because I fancied in doing some embroidery on crochet. Um, and this is a completely made up pattern by myself, but I made some uh, like wrist warmers. Um, I made them uh, in the round. No, I didn't. I didn't make them in the round. I've just told a big, a big lie there. I've, I've knitted them, I've crocheted them flat. That's what I've done. And then I chained five that's what i did sorry i was trying to remember what i did you can hear the rain on the skylight over your head i chained i think five uh to make the hole that's right yeah i was trying to think what i did there uh this is just in um a really cheap budget store um yarn it's a, an acrylic wool mix 
uh, it is a little bit I'm thinking I might um, pick up stitches and just put like a really little tiny cuff like a rib on the bottom just to draw it in a little bit and then I was thinking I might I mean I could I can also do this put like a cuff on them but um yeah I was I was just playing it experimenting um this is I this again this is US double and I crocheted in the front loop only so you get this sort of ribbing effect so I haven't made the second one it was just experimenting I think it's much easier to do that kind of thing with crochet than it is with knitting uh, okay that's all the crochet let's have a slurp of water mm. I think what I'll do now because uh, I have got some purchases to share with you but um, I think I'll show you the um, some of the advent um, yarn that I got. So I had um, had four advents. One was a gift from my company, which was all smellies. It's um, the Rituals advent, and it was a light up village. It was stunning. If you're looking for an advent next year, uh, if you go over to the Dawn Stage channel and look at um, my Vlogmas, um, every day I opened um, one of the, the little light up houses, and it was just such a pleasure that obviously that wasn't craft related uh then i had um then i bought uh, an advent from green lampkin yarns that's suzanne and i bought an advent from uh, jeanette who's crafty clay creations and then i did an advent swap with jeanette um so um suzanne's green lampkins was a yarn advent um and Jeanette's the the one I bought and the swap was like a mishmash of you know just stuff we like so I'm not going to go through every single one I think um I think um Suzanne's theme was is it a Christmas carol was it or what's the one with Scrooge I think it was so each of them um had a name uh of the colorway and it, it was a reference from the book uh, some of them have fallen off now and as I said I'm not going to show you every single one I'm going to work out it's all sock yarn and it's all uh, um, Stellina based and obviously I've got 24 some of them had um, some of them had um, sweeties in some of them had stitch markers in uh, I'm trying to pick them all up I don't know if I'm going to be able to manage them with <laughs> with with two hands oh I'll give it a go um oops sorry i just knocked the camera i don't think i'm gonna manage these oh yeah i did yeah i've got them one more okay this this is all of them 24 every one of them is gorgeous so i think i'm gonna now i've opened them all i'm gonna bligh them all out and do uh work out like a nice fade and figure out i might make a shawl with them i was also in two minds whether to do like a cozy memories blanket and then i'll put in other um minis from my stash but um yeah beautiful um i have got one favorite i'll show you which is this one uh, oh no, the label's fallen off. I think it was something to do with turkey. Ugh. If you're interested, um, that's it, prize turkey. If you're interested, um, sorry, I dropped my notes. Um, Stitch by Mrs. D, Paula, she also had this advent and she opened hers every day and her son Johnny is reading the book at college. And he explained every day um, where um, the name of the yarn fits in with the story, which I thought was really interesting. Um, in the advent, so from Jeanette, I got these really cute little balls, 10 gram balls of cotton, which are really handy. Um, these are uh, Yarn and Colours is the brand. So they're very sweet, lovely, like a burnt orange. I don't know how, it's not really true to camera, the colour. Uh, show you these three. Lovely colours. And then I've got a couple of other yarns uh, in Jeanette's. This was also from Jeanette. I don't think this is showing up very well. 
it's a it's a, a bit like a minty i'd say like a minty green it's beautiful it's really nice very delicate uh and this was also from Jeanette. oh i love this this reminds me of like antique rose stellina um and then one of the other things i've got a whole skein of yarn this is called uh mistletoe and wine and it's um 80% super fine merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. And this is um, hand dyed probably by um, Jeanette or her husband, Tim. Isn't that beautiful? And it's so soft. It's, I mean, beautiful yarn. It looks like a high twist as well. It's gorgeous. So I've not decided, I might make socks with them. I don't know yet. Oh, it's it's beautiful it's definitely you can feel this cashmere and it's so soft um and then the other sort of crafty thing i got so my really sweet friend karen who's also got a youtube channel she's stitches and jack um karen sent me a christmas gift she's so lovely i actually sent karen a gift and it was sent back to me <laughs> so i'm gonna repost that one i was slightly frustrated um she sent me this book yeah it is it's an emma ball notebook this is so nice I've not christened it yet but um it's got all uh interesting information in the beginning like yarn weights and then it's um a combination of lined and Grid. So if you want to do your own colour work, such a nice book. She's got me loads of other little bits and pieces. Uh, but one of the things oh, which is beautiful uh, is this gorgeous skein. This is by Blue Fern Yarns. Again, this is gifted by Karen. Oh, it's got nice speckling in it. Beautiful. Uh, this is... oh oh just got it by karen sent it me so my dawn stays logo is uh the worker bee which is the symbol of manchester and i'm obsessed with bees and um the sock color is called be beautiful i've just twigged <laughs> so this is a uh, uh, platinum sock ply uh, so platinum sock four ply 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon you get 425 meters it's 100 gram oh beautiful and she sent me all other little bee themed goodies and really really spoiled me um oh yeah the other thing i got in um Je jeanette's advent was jam-packed both of them were if you're looking for advents next year i can really recommend suzanne's her yarn is beautiful uh but jeanette's was really yeah it was a complete surprise because you didn't know if you were going to get yarn or something craft related or one of the things she got which i've yet to make that this is um a needle case it's a kit uh and this everything you need is in it and this is by um a lady called angela who owns the bobbin patch and it you know even even the needle threader all the fabric everything is in it and uh full instructions so isn't that and Jeanette is obsessed with toadstools isn't that beautiful so that's uh that was one of my I've been saving this it's a Christmas uh Christmas holiday make oh this rain um and then in terms of our oh, gifts to myself um I shared these on the vlogmas but uh yeah i thought not everybody watched you know watches the vlog which is why i've started this channel um i but i love notebooks i think most most crafty people love a notebook and um this is actually i spotted these uh it's a dutch store and i don't think they deliver um outside of the netherlands but i'll tell you the brand so you can look it up yourself the dutch uh store is zilter.nl um i'll put the name below and this reminded me of um Dolores Umbridge you know the cats from Harry Potter the the horrible headmistress this is all cats um I won't show you everything but uh just it's very vintage 
every single page has an illustration of some and some of them are just very you know in the corner but some of them it's it's a little bit it's like a journal notebook and some of them have i'll show you look they have like a full-on um page of it's like a postcard i don't know what i'm going to use them for so and i've got another one it's the same brand i think it's called it's from Gwinnell Trelez uh have a look so if you want to search for them in your area if they deliver near you uh and then this one is alice in wonderland themed very vintage um and again you know some of them are full-on illustrations Manhattan and some of them are more or oh, love this one the, I can't remember is that the is that the dodo it is isn't it the dodo and then some of them are just more subtle you know but there's something every single page is you know oh So I saw these, I was actually looking for washi tape and then the, I saw these and I was like, oh, I have to have them. They're just beautiful. Like this one's very subtle. So I don't know what I'm going to use them for at the moment. But they are very much like a journal style notebook. So that was a little gift to myself and then the other thing uh, I bought um, so I want to do a bit more sewing in the next year uh, and this caught my eye oh, only for one reason I will make other things from it but um, I fell in love with the polar bear uh, so this is uh, Tilda uh, Winter Delights maybe some of you have already got this book um, and it's all about projects to make with Tilda fabrics but any fabric um, I do like uh, these are, I think they were called the Chalet Girls. Yeah, Chalet Girls. I mean, go skiing. I love the bloomers. Oh, so nice. But yeah, the polar bear, these, I think there was three sizes. Or two. Yeah, there was two sizes here. So this is made from, they're made from fur in the book, but I think, I mean, I think I'm going to make mine from linen. And if you hear from the vlog, you know, I'm obsessed with stumps. So yeah, that was a little treat to myself. So that's Tilda's Winter Delights book, little treat. And then the other thing I bought, and I'm very cross, I don't know if it's my mistake or the company I bought it from, uh, I wanted the um, the 2022 almanac, the the almanac, uh, a seasonal guide to 2022, and I was sent 2021, which yeah, I'm not very happy about, but I'll still read it. It's full of interesting stuff. Um, it's all kinds of things. It tells you about it. This is about the UK's, you know, uh, recipes. Uh, I like the pictures in the, so this is October is my birthday month. This is all interesting facts around October. So on the 21st of October, it's Apple Day. I never knew that. And then on the 21st is the Stowe Horse Fair. It's an autumn gypsy, Romany and traveller gathering. How about that? Oh, and the first of October was start of Black History Month. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So, yeah, I mean, these, I think if you watch Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful, uh, or this Little Wonderful Life, life, um, she sort of piqued my interest. Look, see a sea shanty for August. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I will read it. But, um, yeah, I'm after the 2022 one. That would be ideal. Um, so, how are we doing for time?
I've dropped my notes. <laughs> um, okay, so plans for uh, next year. So I did, um, I think I did a video about, um, was it Make 9? And I hardly finished anything of it. And I thought, well, I'm not doing that again. I'm just not sort of putting any pressure on myself. But I thought, well, I'll share some things that I know I definitely do want to finish. So one of them, crochet related. I really want to finish this. Um, this is a Picnic on the Beach crochet blanket. This is by um, Coastal Crochet. Uh, again, it's made with, oh, I've got a yarn attached, with D, uh, DK, a special, Starcross Special DK. And I'm probably, again, halfway through... Um, so I'll show you that. So that the middle, like um, oh, what's it called? Tunisian crochet. And you've got that bubble stitches, basket weave, these waves. I'll just hold it in front of my face. So you know, I've got quite a lot to do on that, but you know, that's on my uh, plans to finish this. I've really enjoyed making it. It's a lovely, it's a lovely um, project. It's going to look nice when it's finished. Um, then I want to make another uh, close to you shawl, but obviously a, a correct one, not a happy accident one. Oh, and then the other thing I brought this to show you. This is my um, Humley Bee shawl. I forget who the um, who the designer is of this. This is made in Drops Cascade, I think. It's all these little bees. Absolutely loved this. It's got these this pico edging. Uh, it's not a big shawl. I'll just wrap it around so you can see. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's a decent size. I wouldn't have minded it a, a little bit more length here, but that's fine. But um, I went really really wrong with this, so it's full of mistakes. But you know, it's for me. Uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I went completely off. So this side is perfect and this side is really dodgy. Look at the eyelets. They're supposed to be like a diamond shape in it, yeah, and it's off centre. But it's fine, I've been wearing it. I absolutely love it. And it's very, again, this is a very toothy yarn. Um, but it's not scratchy and it's very, very warm. So that's on, I want to... I want to make it properly, you know, because I did enjoy knitting on this. It was lovely. And this, um, again, this is DK, so it worked up quite quickly. Um, what other things do... Oh, that's the other thing. Sorry, I'll move it forward. The other thing, I really want to get back into my sketching. Um, so, uh, I've only... This is recent that I've done this. I did... So, as I said, I'm an avid crafter, and I do... Um, you know, I hand dye yarn, I'm in, I've got a Louette uh, spinning wheel, so I'm a very, very bad spinner, <laughs> terrible spinner. But, you know, I enjoy it, it's fine. Um, one of the things I used to do a lot, I'm trying to revive, like, some of the things that used to give me joy, you know, many, many years ago, is um, painting, drawing, colouring. So, um, I bought myself some um, brush pens. Um, so, I've only done uh, one sketch so far, but I thought I would show you, so... Uh, I did this humpback whale so it was a, a, a pencil sketch and then these I did with the brush pens and a shading and then I outlined it so I really really enjoyed that so this is uh, one of my goals uh, for next year is to do more around um, sketching and painting and you know that kind of thing um what else Oh yeah, I did also, I bought uh, the, in this year, there was, sorry, I've just had a sneezing fit. So I bought two Harry Potter books this year. It was a crochet one and um, a knitting one. And, um, you know, I bought them because I had to have them. They were just released and they're beautiful. So in 2022, I want to try and at least, uh, make at least one project from both of them. And um, I think that's it, yeah. Um, maybe uh, you'll see me filming from, as I said, my workshop. I'll try and put a link in somewhere on the screen or below if you want to look around my workshop. Um, I share that space with 55 other um, artists or ateliers. Uh, very fortunate. It's very creative space. There's every kind of, you know, artistry in there you can imagine. You know, people painting furniture, sewing, you know, painting, pottery, 
massage, there's an artisan bakery in there, you know, there's pretty much everything. Um, so I need to, that's also one of the goals next, next year, spend more time in my own workshop. I tend to do the yarn dyeing from there. Um, and yeah, let's just see what happens with the channel. I think it's a lot clearer for, me, for people. So if, you know, if you tune into the Dawn's Days channel, it's only about the vlogging, the chit chat, you know, out and about, family stuff. And then the, um, the woven almanac is just this, you know, me sat here for a, half an hour to an hour chattering about all the things I like to work on so if you've made it to the end thank you so much um if you did like this video I'd really appreciate if you could um hit the subscribe button join the community uh, help the channel grow uh, if you hit the like as well uh, to you know show me that you did enjoy what I've been waffling about um, if you hit there's a notification bell somewhere I'm not sure if you're on mobile um, laptop tablet it's somewhere on the screen and if you hit that every time I upload a new podcast you'll be notified and yeah all my uh, contact information is below so thanks again for spending some of your free time with me and I'm looking forward to getting to know you all. And if you are here from Dawn's Days, thank you so much. You know, my the Dawn's Days guys are just so supportive. And, you know, I've appreciated every single one of them. You know, the comments, the liking, the sharing. So if you have made it across, thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. So until the next podcast, I'll say goodbye. Take care. Bye.